Sledge, we are live. We are live, Sledge, and we got some big news, buddy. You ready for this? I feel a lot better in this environment than I did last week. I felt overdressed. I felt like I was rattled. This is going to be outstanding. Back in my home, feel good about it. You should feel good, buddy, because now we ain't just winging it anymore, Sledge. We got to have an actual <laughs> intro. What? Because we are digging weekly, presented by FanDuel. That's oh, right. No. Head to FanDuel.com slash Diggin, D-I-G-G-I-N, to bet along with us on America's number one sportsbook, Sledge. FanDuel is giving us the keys. Here's the deal, Sledge. We got basketball. We got NHL. The playoffs are winding down. There's going to be a couple of months there where all we got is baseball heading into October. FanDuel's letting us be the point guard. We're going to steer the people in the right way, respectfully, responsibly. But we're going to talk some ball. We're going to give the people some edge out there because we need to start cashing some tickets, Sledge. And I'm, I love it. I'm all about this. This is me. This is my language. I've always loved doing this with football, all other sports. Never really dug into the baseball side of this, but ooh, we am I excited for this, Sledge? I feel like I'm going to learn a lot from you too. You know, it's not my, it's not my bag, but I'm going to sit there and you are going to teach me so much about this this world. One thing I do know, so you know. There's been a lot, couple of Australian basketball players, Andrew Bogut, you know, number one draft pick. We're talking about big-time basketball players. If it's something I know, it's NBA. Let's go. Listen, here's the deal, Sledge. We're going to dig so deep into this. Not only will we give you the insight on baseball, we're going to let you know, hey, so-and-so is getting in late from this trip. There's a little edge here. We're going to be able to That's read true. the numbers. We can tell you what the line movement's doing. Sledge, this is right up my alley, buddy, and I, I am fired up You're for this. You're perfect for it, man. I tell you what, speaking on business, let's get right into it. Josh Hader. Josh Hader is getting he's getting a lot of heat right now from a lot of people that are are uninformed on the situation, Sledge. And I know you can really speak on this, but yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and give my two cents on this. Please. This is a system problem, Sledge. I mean, let's take it back to Josh Hader losing an arbitration. What a lot of people don't know is when you get to arbitration, when you hear the organization bashing you in a way, especially an organization like Milwaukee, where he went above and beyond to get them in a position where they are as an organization. He's taken a lot of heat now because the year before he can cash in for his contract, he set some rules and some guidelines. People don't like it, but Sledge, inform us on exactly what he's doing. Well, let's talk about that for a second, okay? You look at a guy who, when you break this all down, when a team goes to arbitration, they're effectively trying to find whatever numbers they can find that skews their argument towards them, which effectively says, you are horseshit at your job. And the player leaves those arbitration hearings thinking, these guys don't value me at all. Not mm -hmm. to mention, he was the first guy, him and Craig Cancel were the first guys that I really saw take advantage of that new closer role and bring him in in an inning other than the ninth inning. So you can understand when a Josh Hader gets to arbitration, and he's gone over and above what the team has asked him to do and has a, has foregone save opportunities mm -hmm. because we all know that the biggest innings in the game doesn't necessarily have to be the ninth inning with a three-run lead facing seven, eight, nine. It could be the seventh when you've got two on and you're coming up against two, three, four, and you've got to get out of that inning, otherwise the game's over. So he was the first guy that you saw do that role so you can understand when he gets to the arbitration process and he's about to get paid based on what he's done, they're going to bring up numbers. Well, hold on, Rosenbagger, you don't compete to the guys that have come before you, so you don't, shouldn't get paid. Totally explains why he would have gone, well, now I've got to take care of myself because clearly these guys don't value me. Absolutely. And, and, and for those of you who don't know, when you go to an arbitration case, there is two lawyers that work for the team and they are specifically there to try and explain why you shouldn't be getting whatever number that you put in that you feel that you should get. It is the player with the agent and the players union that are then fighting for their case. So when Josh Hader is sitting in that courtroom hearing the Milwaukee Brewers say, it's not important that he's doing all this. We need him in the ninth inning to do that. Then when it comes time for him to cash in, how can you blame him? And I think yeah. this is something that is confused with fans because not only with Josh Hader, it's the same situation with counsel. When you are a teammate, when you see a guy have an opportunity to go out there and get paid and you see the effort that he did for you while you were his teammate, teammates are like, man, go get your money. We know yeah. the system's messed up. We know there's flaws in this. Go get your money. So it's going to be interesting because we are going to have some people on 
from San Diego, from the Padres. I know yeah. they felt a certain way about the situation. So it'll be really cool to kind of hear their perspective, hear where they are. But I will say this, and this is – I am firm with this statement. There is a lot of guys that I respect around the league that have played with Josh Hader, and they have nothing – but the best things to say about him as a teammate, a competitor, all the above. Just go look at his numbers when he first came in the league. He was as good as it gets. And his numbers bar a little two-month period in his career, he they're as good as it gets. I just want to throw something at you right here, Hoz, that, that kind of speaks to the whole problem in general. In 2013, the 30 teams across MLB used 513 relievers. Last season, 651 pitched in the major leagues and an increase of more than 25% over the decade. And most of them, many of them, close or at minimum wage. So it's like, it's basically, and you look at my case, okay? I don't want to say, oh, poor me. Every time it got to the point where I was about to get paid, I was dealing with an injury. So it was, and you look at my numbers, the, the amount of numbers that I pitched in when I was healthy I was not in a position where I could walk in and go, hey, I'm not pitching. Because if I didn't say yes, I'm getting sent back to the bushes and yeah. I'm going to be pitching in AAA. So not everybody has Josh Ader's ability to just walk in and say, hey, I'm the best reliever that's ever shown up and I'm going to have this. But if you do, I, as a guy that dealt with more injuries than anybody and basically made league minimum my whole career, I can understand why he's doing it. Yeah, and I will say this, man. Again, it is an, it might be an unpopular take, but, but what Josh Hader did – it takes courage to be that. It takes courage to stand up and say, hey, listen, I'm going to change this as a whole for the position. Kudos to Hater out there. I know he's sure. turned it on. He's out there in Houston. Yep. And and all that plays a factor. When he's a free agent, the Yankees, the Dodgers, Houston, these guys are all in your market coming up. So it was well played on him. I know some of the teammates, some of the fans might not think that. But at the end of the day, you, you have to you have to respect the move there on what he did. And, and speaking of closers, we're getting close to now – that point in time in the year where teams are starting to decide, okay, are we going to go for this or are we going to sell at the deadline? Yeah. And man, Sledge, I was just out there in Kansas City and the energy in the stadium is back. The let's go Royals chants are there for the final three outs. And I'm telling you right now, Sledge, this team is a move or two away from being back in October yeah. and doing what they do. And I cannot wait for it crazy to think that they had a list of things that they wanted to accomplish in the offseason. They were one of the major guys going out there and spending money on veteran guys. They've gone out and got Seth Lugo. He's going off his face. Salvador Perez has picked it up on a level that you've never seen from him. The team is rolling. You know what it's like when you get in an environment like that. You know what Kansas City's like when you get rolling in Kansas City. Anybody mm -hmm. can explain it to you. Man, seeing seeing those guys do what they're doing, it's it's pretty exciting. They're the only they're the only division that's got two teams with thirty plus wins, and you got to look at it. You think it's the Guardians and it's the Royals? Not a not a chance. I would have said that even a month ago. Not at all. And I tell you what, I know the fans are upset with us right now, but they need to be upset at FanDuel because if we had this deal at the beginning of the year, <laughs> we're hammering Royals futures odds to make the playoffs. Because there we go again, Sledge. You look on. Certain websites that type in the formula and, and, and calculate everything out. Kansas City was a 13% chance to make the playoffs, and now they're over 50% chance. So those future odds at the beginning of the year must have been through the roof. But I'm telling you, Sledge, it was a different energy out there. And one big thing that I will say from watching the games in the years past, I know there was a lot of frustration. The guys want to win, especially with Salvi. Salvi is right up there on the top step of every homer. He's jumping right out there for every double, doing their signals. We got a chance to walk in the locker room, see how the guys interact. Those guys are enjoying being around each other. They're saying they're going to dinner every time on the road. I'm telling you, Sledge, they got everybody in that organization pulling on the same rope, and I think there's going to be something special out there in Kansas City going down. They're not just doing it with, you know, they're not being saved by one or two particular guys. They're doing it across the whole, the whole spectrum. The starting rotation has been pretty incredible, honestly. Mm -hmm. Bobby Witt is playing at an MVP caliber. He hit a ball into the into the drink, into the fountains in 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 left center, in left center, and it was a ball down and in. It was like he's he's nuts. That team is exciting. Can't wait to see what, how they finish this thing off. Man, I tell you what, he that that ball in left center, he is hitting baseballs that I didn't even see people hit in batting practice. And we all know there are certain areas in batting practice where yeah, I seen him, I seen him go up there, but what he's doing now is is really unbelievable man and we talked to him before the year we were all super super high on him i think we were all pretty confident he was going to go out there have a good year but for me 
the way he's leading that team. He's he's being himself. He's got his quote. The boys are playing some ball out yeah. there. He's just himself, man. He's not going above and beyond trying to be this guy. He's not. He's taking care of business on the field. He's doing his stuff in the locker room with the guys. And it really shows. It really does, man. And that's something special with teams, too, is when you have starting pitchers that now have almost have a secret competition amongst each other to go out there and outdo each other night in and night out. And that's what they got. They got Lugo going out there going seven. Waka's following him. Reagan's is striking out the world at yeah. 99 miles an hour from the left side. Yeah. I mean, that's impressive to watch. And, you know, I know we're we're filming this on a Thursday morning, but it is not going unnoticed that San Francisco is going to the East Coast facing Pittsburgh on a 1235 start. And you got Paul Skeens. That's a tough, tough turnaround right there to wake up and face Paul Skeens at which would be, what, 930 in the morning, San Francisco and Cali time. That's tough ticket, Sledge. Okay, we're also talking about a guy that faced a lineup twice in back-to-back -back starts. And I mentioned after his first start that he was good, but he wasn't sharp by any means. We saw a level up against that same lineup. He punched out the first seven guys he faced, five days after he faced them already, ended up with 11 punch outs on the day, six no-hit innings, and the only reason he came out of the game is because his pitch count was just about 100. You can speak to this more than I can, but as an as a offensive player who's already seen a guy just a week before, then he does that against you. What does that speak to the kind of stuff that he's bringing right now? I tell you what, that is the big thing that we were looking for. And we talked about this, that we want to see the at-bats, second at-bat, the third at-bat. And now you get a whole week to prepare and face him again. And the swings were the exact same. The swings were, were anticipating heater, still not catching up to it. Anytime he throws you a breaking ball, it's just, you got nothing. You're in between. You got no shot. The heater moves. I was watching some of those fastballs in, four-seam fastballs, by the way, into lefties that are starting off the plate, and he's getting like front door run on a four-seam fastball, which is something that is just unheard of. And the swings, are just, they're missing by inches. Yes, and I tell you what, you look at right now, you look at the NL Rookie of the Year, you look at those future odds, Shota out there in Chicago is, is virtually unhittable right now, and he needs to be very good throughout the rest of the year or just maintain some kind of average level and there's a good chance he's got it. But I'm telling you, Skeens, with this matchup today, he goes out there, he gets another seven, eight punchies. Those odds are going to look better and better for Skeens. So that's something that that we all got to jump on now because with the hype and all the strikeouts, he's going to be right up there in the mix for, for NL Rookie of the Year, and I'm here for it. Two starts in, if you were to average out the two starts, and as much of an improvement as we saw from him based on one start to the next, I can't imagine once he gets fully comfortable at this level what the numbers are going to look like from here to the end of the year. So it's going to be a race between those two, but my money's probably on probably on Skeens, if I'm honest. I mean, no question. And that's what's so fun about what we're about to get into right now because it's like, is Paul Skeens going to be an all-star? Are there odds for that? Can we hit up FanDuel and be like, yo, is there odds for this? And we can make that happen. So it's going to be fun, too, to interact with fans out there. Give us something that you want to see on the betting board, on a futures board, whatever it is, and we can find a way to hammer that down. So I don't know if we're going to do it. I don't know if we can promise to make it happen, but we know a guy, Sledge, and we're definitely going to try. We're damn That's sure going to try. That is absolutely outstanding. That's they did it with Harper, man. They you remember Harper's first year? He made such an impact that the All Star was like, "Hey, man, we're gonna have this kid at the All Star game." So don't be surprised. Yes, yes, and that is. I tell you what. So let's real quick on that All Star game. That was 2012, and that was in Kansas City. There's been a couple conversations, especially out in Kansas City, for this reunion about pitchers and how the starting pitchers' mindset has changed and all of that. I think a very good example that everyone kind of misses is that 2012 All-Star game when Justin Verlander started. If you remember back then when Justin Verlander was on Detroit, he was a guy first time through the lineup. It's going to be 93 to 95. It's going to be majority heaters. He's going to have that 100, that 99 in the tank for when a big situation comes, second and third, seventh inning, two outs. Boom, I need to get out of it. That 2012 All-Star game, he went up to Ned Yost and Ned told us, he said, these people don't want to watch me throw 93, 94 miles an hour. They want to watch me throw gas. I'm going to go out there, put on a show. He went out there. He was like 100 to 101 for the first inning, got hit around a little bit. But that just told you how he went out of his game. But the mindset now of a starting pitcher, that's kind of where we're at. It's strikeouts. Yeah. It's get through five. But there's teams now, especially these last two weeks, 
Kansas City, there's been some starting pitching. There's been some outings that have gone six, seven. That seems like we might be turning a corner a little bit, Sledge, and I'm here for it. Not to be a Braves homer, but we're seeing it with Chris Sale. Week after week, he's going seven innings. Max Fried, another quick, complete game sh- last night. She gave up two runs, but was complete game under 100 pitches. Second time this year. Walker Bueller came back from his injury. Starts talking about the fact that, hey, man, I don't have to pitch at 97 all the time. I can be effective at 94, 93, and it's still in the tank when I need it. You're 100% right. Guys are thinking their way through baseball games, and they're seeing success by relying on some contact. Max Freed could punch out the world if he wants to, but he said in interviews, I've gone back to who I am, I'm pitching a contact, I'm relying on my defense, and I'm getting through games with efficiency. What a concept. (laughs) What a concept. (laughs) And I tell you what, we mentioned the 2014 ALCS reunion. We were just out in Kansas City celebrating. The boys put on a show for us. They swept Oakland. Salvi hit a couple homers. Salvi was three for three, pointing up at the suite, showing us oh, love. Man. I mean, you talk about an epic weekend. It was three days of straight belly laughing, open bar, taking a bus to another open bar. The boys were having a good time talking shop. I got through it, Sledge. I made it the first day. I was, whew, I didn't make it the first night, Sledge. I had to go home a little early. I wasn't walking straight. But after that, day two and three, I finished strong, and you would have been proud of my performance. I'm glad you were able to pick it up. I know it's been a while since you've had to have a touch and go session, but I'm glad you were able to pick it up for three days. You know, it's been, we've been out of the game for a little while, Hoz. Those things that, you know, it was pretty epic. But to see those guys again, I mean, what memories you guys have had over the course of those two years and to couple it with the momentum that the current KC team has, what a feeling for even everybody who showed up. You're also inducted into the Hall of Fame, weren't you? Yeah, that was pretty cool as well. I got to give his little couple shout outs during the speech. I got to recognize Dayton Moore. I got to thank him for everything. So that was fun. Just a fun time to be back in Kansas City. It really is always special to be back there, celebrate with the fans. It was the same energy as 2014. You can yeah. feel it. You can feel when the stadium started to get more packed, fans started to get a little more into it, and the fans are walking around there confident. I mean, they're walking around with Bobby Witt Jr., jerseys they they got two buttons open they're walking around with their chest out hey they're feeling confident about their team right now got to love it i'll tell you one thing that i did notice cuz i was there in 16 right the year, the year after you guys won it mm-hmm. and to see the the way that Kansas City embraced you guys throughout that run and then obviously after it every starbucks was blue every single street sign had blue paint on it everybody was wearing royal shirts you couldn't leave your house and it was just a sea of royal blue everywhere. It was just nuts to really see that. It was. It really was. And some of these teams now, like we said earlier, are getting to that point in the season where, okay, we need to add some pieces before the deadline. Houston right back up in the mix. I mean, Crazy. who who are some of these guys at the deadline? Who are some of these moves? Who are some of these teams that are going to go out there and make that move? Because I feel like at this point in time, it's it's a couple bullpen pieces away for a lot of teams. Exactly. It's either it's it's a lot of pitching. You can see that there's going to be pitching is going to be high on the list of priorities for guys, which it always is and always seems to be. That's when that Mason Miller conversation comes into it. How much are you willing to give up from your farm system to go out and get a potential shutdown closer for the for the playoff run, which can be so important. You see that the Braves relied so heavily on their bullpen the year they won it, and a lot of you guys did too. The Royals invented that, so yeah. you know you've, the teams have seen that once you get into the playoffs, if you can find yourself three, four, five guys out in that bullpen, you can shut it down after five innings. So, man, it's going to be. We've started that process a little earlier this year with the Arise trade. I think that's going to push guys to maybe make some decisions a bit quicker. But the turn, St. Louis is eight and two in their last ten. Like there's teams mm-hmm. that are turning it around. The Yankees are firing right now. You know, yeah. there's some good, there's some good baseball teams, and there's some surprising, surprising baseball teams, which is great. Yes, perfect. So the Yankees and St. Louis, both, both key matchups here. I'm going to look at in the weekend. St. Louis going to Chicago. They're playing the Cubs. That's a huge, huge series out there. They're ending it up with Sunday night baseball. A couple of good pitching matchups, or at least St. Louis is drawing. They're getting Shota. They're getting Jameson Talion. But I will say, Sledge, those division matchups. There's a lot of familiarity there. The hitters. Anytime there's familiarity, that's a tough word to say. Familiar air. How do you help me out when, with that? When you're buddy. used to seeing somebody a couple of when times. When you're used to that, we're just going to say that. When you're used to I'm seeing Australian, someone, dude, no it's, chance advantage, I'm saying it. it's advantage hitter, right? It's yep. advantage hitter. So, yes, these Cubbies, they got some good numbers in their starting staff, but I would look for the overs that whole entire series. Check the weather. 
If the weather is good in Wrigley, the ball is going to be flying. Yeah. These hitters have had plenty of looks against these guys. I think there's going to be a lot of runs scored that weekend. And then the Yankees heading to San Diego. I think that's going to be a very, very good matchup. Little uh, 97 Soto. World Series rewind right there. Juan Soto, you know, didn't have the best day in San Diego, and the fans definitely will know. Will let you know about that if you didn't have the best day out there. Trust me, they <laughs> you will know let you about know that? about that. <laughs> hey, so. I will say, watch out for Juan Soto. Watch out for him to have a big series out there. He's feeling himself. He <laughs> just looks right in the net, in the in the New York pinstripes. He does. He's going to be shuffling out of control. Look for Juan Soto to do some damage out there. I would definitely look at some homer props, whatever that is. And Sledge, speaking of homer props, do you know what they call Kyle Tucker out there in Houston? I King don't. Tuck. King Tuck, and rightfully so, dude. King Tuck, he is the king of Tuesdays, Sledge. You know why? Because we have Dinger Tuesdays for FanDuel. And this dude, not only does he have 17 homers, but he homers on Tuesdays. And it's one of the coolest specials out there for all sports books. It's basically throw a $25 prop bet on, on Kyle Tucker to hit a home run. If anybody in that game hits a home run, it's a $5 free bet right back to your account. So you can literally get all the way back up to that $25 and hit big if Kyle Tucker ends up hitting a homer. So Kyle Tucker, he's the king of Tuesday because he is all about dingers. Love that. Hey, have you ever changed your shoes mid a bat and gone back and had over three first couple of a bats? Change your shoes and sleeve Kyle Tucker two tanks the very next two at bats. I mean, I wish I would have knew about this because I would have been changing shoes left and right. My gosh. <laughs> I mean, I, that would have been super useful. Would have been. I needed it. Needed it hard. You needed. needed it. You need to throw out a shout out to you, Xander Bogarts. Tough shoulder injury for him over the weekend versus the Bravos. Yes. He's going to be out tough, for too. a while. Yes, and that's that's something that you look at. Having played with Xander, you know, San, Xander takes a lot of balls off the wrist, off you know each and every place that you can take a ball, and he usually gets right back up. He's one of the tougher players that I've seen. So to see him down for a while, you knew it was something serious. It was a full extension dive, trying to make a play for the team. Um, that's a big blow for them out there. Hopefully he can get back. And I will say this, if he is able to get back and the Padres are in a run, in a September run, hopefully play baseball in October, Xander has an opportunity to wipe out this whole entire bad start, play some good baseball down the stretch, ball out in the postseason, and that'll really, really change the narrative for him in San Diego. And I kind of hope that happens. No one's going to remember what happened in the first three months if you come back and make it to the playoffs and do what you just suggested. That's going to ch change the whole season for him. What do we have coming up this week? We got a lot coming up this week. Not only, not only are we doing actual intros now because we're sponsored, no big deal, but <laughs> we got the SUA episode that just came out. I think everyone has taken such a likening to SUA, understanding how good of a dude he is. That process and development job, that role for organizations – all over sports has become yeah. so big and Sua, in my opinion and i think a lot of people's opinion is right at the top of that For of sure. that role he is the best in the business as far as baseball there's not only with the guys in tampa bay and i hate to throw him under the bus on this one but guys across the whole entire league were trying to get a hold of Sua because they've heard and they respect everything that he does in that role and that is a role that is hard to get trust from players so when you get trust from some of these big time names that speaks volumes for Sua. There's been such a stigma with mental health and it's always been, you know, you don't want to have to go to the mental skills guy, but he, he, I sat in a house with a, with him for a week and it just changed my whole perspective on a lot of things and just listened to him talk. He just has such nuanced opinions and such balance with his opinions and he's able to get you through and make you think about things in a way that you often probably haven't thought about. It. Yeah, there's no question. And we have a couple specials as well coming out. Josh, Apple. He's going to be the the Memorial Day special for us. As we all know, the Murph Challenge, it's something that a lot of people on this day, on Memorial Day weekend, they try and get the whole challenge in it. And I might be wrong on this sledge, but it's, you know, you got to run some miles. You got to, it's a tough workout, pull-ups, push-ups, the whole deal. We, we, we did make a promise during that interview, but I feel like I've done a little bit of a meniscus, so I'm not going to be able to compete <laughs> in it this year. But I guarantee you at some point, we you and I are going to have to do that challenge and we're going to have to face up to it. Yeah, if I would have passed the physical, I would have been out there. I would have had the stopwatch, maybe even the headphones, and I would have been locked in. But, Josh, that's on me. Next year, I will be healthy. And I tell you what, I will really think about doing this. But 
that's something that maybe, hey, maybe, maybe the whole digging deep squad, maybe at some point in time, you know, we all put that as our goal, and that's something that we all accomplish together. That'd be that'd be some that'd be pretty cool for Josh to uh, show yeah. him some love. But also, Sledge, another special. We have a special with Scott Boris, the the baseball agent in all of the land. He's the most famous baseball agent out there. But this is going to be a specific conversation on the youth side, on mm-hmm. youth sports, specifically yep. youth baseball. Obviously, we talked about Brittany Giroli's article in the Athletic on all the stuff that's happening right now. So this is us being new to everything, being new to the space, and just wanting to learn. So we're going to bounce some questions off Scott, and that's something we're both looking forward to, to not only educate ourselves, but educate all the parents, all the coaches, and everybody out there in the youth baseball world. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. I just want to get informed. This is not a space that I know anything about. So the more questions and the more information that we can get to you guys, the more informed that everyone's going to be and the better decisions that you can make for yourself and your kids. And I think that's what we're trying to do. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. And I will say, Sledge, as we continue to try and grow as Digging Weekly, as Digging Deep on all these platforms, we're going to step our game up. We're going to try and get a lot more interaction now with the fans. We want to hear some questions the fans had to have for Scott, for certain people. Tell us some odds you want with FanDuel. Let's go. It's time, boys. We're stepping our game up. The energy, full gas pedal. We're ready to go. We're ready to cash some tickets. Sledge, I love you, buddy. You look great. You too, Turn bro. back those animations off because however you came in was epic. <laughs> and I need that back on there. I need it. Let's see it. if I can find it. Let's see if I can Come find on. it. Here we Come go. On. One time. Here we go. See Come if on. I something going. Come Give on. Me something. Come on. Dang ah. it. I mustn't have done it. Dang it. I thought I knew my computer. Anyway, hey, see you next week, brother. All right, buddy.